Nationals hosting the Marlins, and the Marlins are minus 160 on the money line. The Nationals are plus 130, over under nine runs. The Marlins laying a run and a half on the run line are plus 100, meaning if you bet them that way, they have to win by two. While the Nationals getting a run and a half on the run line are minus 120, meaning if you bet them that way and they win this game outright, you win. They lose by one, you win. Garrett pitched twice against the Nationals last year. Seven and a third, one run, one earned. They won that game three to two in 10 in DC, and he struck out four in that game. Six innings, one run, one earn. They won that game 5-2. to two. He struck out six, and that was in Miami. The Marlins are 7-3 and three as a team in Garrett's last 10 starts. They've won his last three starts. He's averaging five innings pitched and 5.6 strikeouts per game in those games. So he may be a guy that you want to keep an eye out on for the strikeout line. Usually I look for pitchers who are a batter an inning or greater. Irvin did not pitch against the Marlins either last year or this year. They are 2-5 and five as a team in his last seven starts. They've lost his last five starts. He's averaging four and a third innings pitched and 3.3 strikeouts per game in those games. Head-to-head, head, the home team is 7-3. and three. The Marlins are on a four-game winning streak. The Marlins are 7-3 and three against the Nationals in their last 10. The favorite, you guessed it, is 7-3 and three on the money line, while the underdog getting a run and a half on the run line is 6-4. and four. There have been four one-run games in their last 10 meetings, including the last game that they played against each other, and three out of the last four that they've played against each other. The over-under is 4-4-2, four, four, and two, and the under-9, specifically, is 7-1-2. and two. For those who are concerned about the wind in D.C. as of right now at 7.20 in the morning, it's blowing from right field to left field. No, forgive me, from left field to right field at 13.9 miles per hour. So it's more going to be effective for, I want to say, the lefties, the pull hitters. It, it may pull a ball from left field towards center. So the wind may have a significant outcome on this game. The last game that they played against each other, which was yesterday, the Marlins won 6-5. The game before that, the Marlins won 5-3. The game before that, the Marlins won 4-3. The game before that, the Marlins won 5-4. All of those games were this season. The Marlins are on a two-game winning streak. They are 7-3 in their last 10. And the over-under is 5-5 five five in their last 10 games. Nine runs, 12 runs. 5 runs and 11 runs, 1 run and a loss, 3 runs and a loss, 4 runs and a win, 6 runs and a win. For the Nationals, they're 1 and 3 in their last 4, 2 and 8 in their last 10, and the over under is also 5 and 5 in their last 10 games. 7 runs, 9 runs, 5 runs, 11 runs, 1 run and a loss, 4 runs and a loss, 4 runs and a win, 5 runs and a win. I know that this sounds silly and foolish to hedge your bets here, but seemingly when these teams play each other, they're 1 run games. Marlins with the money line, Nationals getting the runs, and I'm going to go under. These are just my picks. If you disagree, please go with your gut and please bet responsibly.